shouldn't have come here. <gasps> What's your name? Lara Croft. I knew what I must become. Okay, what's up everybody? I hope you enjoy that trailer. All right, so without further ado, let's get going into the editing. Tip number one, I would say, is folder organization. So as you can see, this is the Tomb Raider trailer that I've created and I've organized it into these different folders. So I have a folder for footage, I have a folder for paperwork, music, and so on and so forth. So in the future, if I need to bring it to someone else to work on it, all I gotta do is just copy and paste this entire folder. So that's how I organize the folder structure when I work on any project. So moving on, timeline organization. The way I organize my timelines is a little bit unconventional. For short pieces like this, it's easier to organize because it's so short and there's not too much footage to work with. So I slap all of the raw footage at the back of the timeline and then I hit M as in mic on a keyboard to mark the points that are most interesting in the video. So once I have all these points marked, I would move these clips to the beginning of the timeline and start the assembly process. If you're working on a feature film, a trimmer option might be good to use and you might want to organize the project by the day of when that project was filmed. The way I've organized this timeline is that if you hold Alt and then that button next to the one, you can toggle between the timeline and the options at the top. And if you hit the squiggly line next to the one, that will expand all of these clips here. And then if you hit control, you can scroll up and down. So basically I put all my music at the bottom. Afterwards, I put all the sound effects above the music and then I would put the footage above and then I would have the aspect ratio crop at the top. So that's how I organize my timeline. The next tip that I'm gonna give you, if you're working with 4K footage, what you wanna do is you would want to create a proxy for it what a proxy is, is a low res file of the original so that your computer doesn't choke up because 4K footage has a lot of data. So to do that, let's drag in a footage. Let's say you wanna do that one, drag it in. Okay, yes. And then right click in Vegas, Magix, and create proxy. It might be similar in Adobe Premiere and other editing softwares, but what this does is creates a low res file within the footage folder. If you go to draft mode, you can edit the video in the proxy. And then when you want to export, you just go to best and then click on full and then that will export the high res version of the clip. So that's how you use proxies. The next tip that I want to give you is a reframing method and it's the rule of thirds. I'll put a link in the description below. In a nutshell, basically it's an imaginary line. You would line up the shot where these lines cross. So in our, my example, you can see here that my imaginary line lines up to his eyeball. So it's like a tic-tac-toe line. That's where I want to frame up these shots. And you can see in this wide shot, you can see her line is lined up above the top part of the frame. Especially with 4K footage, you have the option to move this frame around to line it up directly to where these lines intersect. So check out that tutorial. It's very descriptive and he explains a lot more in detail about it. All right, the next tip that I'm going to give you is Title safe and action safe. So what that means is that long time ago when CRT monitors existed, basically some of the texts when you're editing may cut off on those screens, but it doesn't really happen too much now on plasma and modern day flat screen TVs and computers. So what I like to do is it's a good rule of thumb to still apply that rule when you're editing just because you don't ever know if it does go on a CRT monitor, you don't want your text to be cut off. In Vegas, it's really simple. It's this button here. So what you want to do is click on safe areas and then you can click on this to toggle the title safe, which is the inner line and then the action safe, which is the outer line. You don't want any of this text to touch that inner line. Otherwise on CRT monitors, it may get cut off. 
The next thing that I want to talk about is cropping your shot to academy aspect ratio because that's what the industry uses now. If you search for 2.35 to 1, you copy this template and then drop it into your timeline. So these two Vegas solid colors are my aspect ratio crop. So you can actually move the frame up and down to adjust it accordingly. When they're exporting to the theater, that's what the video best fits to in the theater screen. So that is why they use 2.35 to 1. Another tip that I want to talk about is when you're creating sound effects, you want to layer your sound effects into many different layers as possible so that you can get the best sound. For example, here, that's that sound by itself. And then I also have this sound right next to it. And then I have this sound. This is all layered up. So if you combine those three sounds together, so I was just solo that, this one, this one, and this one. That's the type of sound that you get. So if you watch the whole entire piece. So it's good to layer sound effects in order to get more depth in your sound. Another thing is that with audio is that you don't want to have the audio clip. So you want to keep everything under negative 12 dBs, which is the industry standard. So if, you, if we play this section of the clip here. We keep an eye on this section of the mixer and we notice that it's clipping very little 0.3 dBs. The whole thing is within negative 12 dB. So you want to make sure that your audio does not clip. There are also free music that you can use. I'll include it in the description below like Ben Sound and Comtech, YouTube Creative Library, and also even YouTube itself. So for example, I search for trailer music and then I go down to the filter, Creative Commons, so these are the music that you can use for free. If you go down to show more and then you can see that it's used for Creative Commons attribute license. And if you click on that, you can read about what the license is. And then sometimes if you search for free music, for example, I found a music and then you click on show more. That's the instruction he wants you to do when you use his music. Also, if you really like the music, but you're not able to use it, uh, you might want to contact the creator directly. So that's how I find music for Finding pictures and videos, there are a few sites that I like. Number one is Pexos and then number two is Pixabay and they've got nice high quality free images that you can use. I sometimes use it for web building, for client work. And also in Google, if you search for images, let's say you want to search for backgrounds, you click on images, you go to tools and then you go to user rights label for reuse. These are all the images that you can use technically without asking the creator for it. So you can play around with Google and look at these different settings and you can sometimes find pictures that you want to use for free. The next thing that I want to talk about is color grading. Color grading is a whole new different industry. I'll include a description and a link again so that you can learn more about it. There is a difference between color correction and color grading. Color correction is when you have a series of cameras and you want to match all of them so that they look the same. And color grading is the artistic aspect of making your film portray a specific mood or look and it enhances the storytelling process. So in this trailer, what I've done is I try to match the color of the actual trailer with my footage as best as possible. So what I did is I added a color curves and I push the green a little bit more as you can see here than the other colors because if you look at the original trailer here, it's, it has a little tint of green. The next step is how to use video scopes. All computer monitors are probably calibrated at a different setting. Some might be darker, some might be brighter. And unless you have a calibrated monitor, you want to use video scopes to check your colors when you're exporting to the web. In Vegas, you click on view, you would go down here to video scopes, and then you would see video scopes. You click on a gearbox. What you want to do is make sure that these two boxes are unchecked because we're not broadcasting to television. This one is broadcasting exclusively to the web. And then how do you use video scopes? I'll describe it briefly and I'll include the description in the link so you can read more about it. Zero is black, 100 is overexposed, and anything between is safe. And that's how you use the waveform monitor. For the vector scopes, it looks at saturation. So zero is black and white, over 100% is oversaturated, so you don't want to do that. And the skin tones is around this region here. And it's very similar to with all other editing softwares. RGB Parade, if all these colors are lined up, that means you know that it is white balanced. And then the histogram, it barely use it, but zero is black, 
0.255 is white and this tells you an average of where your colors are sitting. So you can see here, my footage is pushed towards the blue spectrum a little bit and I like that blue tint in my footage. And you can see nothing is below zero and everything is not overexposed. So that's how you use video scopes in a nutshell. When you're editing a trailer like this, you might wanna send it out to different friends to take a look at it because they might have different input. And also when you're editing for a long time, you become numb to the footage. It's good to get feedback from other people, good to take a break on it and then revisit the trailer afterwards. And that's how you improve on the clip. There are many ways in editing that trailer that you just saw. My way is not the only way, so feel free to experiment with your way. I'll include some sound effects and Photoshop action. So click on the link below to download that, it's all free. Thank you for your time and enjoying it and happy editing.